Hi everyone, uh, in this episode we're going to talk about the subdomain takeover and the bucket snipping. Uh, these are the interesting attacks and interesting vulnerability. I'm not sure if uh, if you have uh, discovered that or, or you might have come across that in the past and you might not know what to do with this vulnerabilities. So we'll take a look at these examples. We'll also take a look at the exploit scenarios and uh, of course the mitigation and also some recent examples of these vulnerabilities. So first of all, what is subdomain takeover? So the basic understanding is subdomain takeover is a host that points to a particular service not currently in use, which uh, someone, attacker, can use to serve content on the vulnerable subdomain by setting up an account on a third-party service. So this is a definition, but let's let's see in the real-world scenario how it works. So for example, uh, let's say this is the main domain of uh, of, a, of a company, and then they have a subdomain called support.cybersecuritytv.com. This is very uh, uh, easy case, right? Now what happens is a uh, user or customers would request uh, to the main site, and then uh, there is also a support site which can be accessed through this site, or the user can directly access the site. Now the issue uh, we are talking about is, for example, what if this support dot cybersecurity dot com is shut down. Uh, for example, like you know, uh, uh, whoever. Uh, so of course, this domain must be owned by this main company, which is Cybersecurity TV. Uh, and they they did not. They said, okay, we're gonna stop supporting, and we don't need this website. They they take it down. Now, if the user, uh, like you know, go to the support site, they'll receive 404, of course, because there is no uh, such site now. The issue is, what if uh, you as a user encounter this, that 404, and then you checked out and you said, oh, this domain is available, so support.cybersecurity.com, because it's been released by this company, uh, you can grab that domain. So now you, as in, let's say from the attacker mindset, you signed up for this domain, you got the domain, and you set up the, you just clone this site and, and put it here, you put the login, username, password, whatever. Now, if the user comes here, then uh, they will say, oh, that's a support.cybersecurity.com. It's a legitimate site. They'll put in their credentials, and now you can steal the cookies or steal their username, password, everything, right? Now, the worst case scenario would be if they have not removed the reference from the main site, those users will also be redirected, which is always the case. And the problem here, why this works is because uh, Cybersecurity TV, uh, they actually removed the site, but they did not actually clean up the DNS records. So the D they should have, like, you know, clear the DNS. So if someone uh, goes to support their Cybersecurity TV, it shouldn't be, like, you know, uh, it shouldn't point to anywhere. Like, they should clean up the DNS records so it doesn't point to that domain. Let's take a look at the bucket snipping first, and then we'll also deep dive into how the step-by-step -step scenario works of this attack. So uh, this is similar. Like instead of the uh, support or the backend side, uh, the application uses some S3 bucket. And now the bucket is deleted or removed, and then the attacker creates the bucket with the same name because the bucket name is not globally unique. Uh, they can, and since this bucket was removed, of course, even if it's unique, uh, anyone can, let's say the application points to bucket name called test, and now this bucket is deleted, but the reference, the application still makes a reference to that bucket. So when the attacker creates the bucket with the same name, now the application is going to refer to the test bucket because the reference was still there. They did not remove the reference. They forgot to do that. So whatever the test, uh, like whatever the details that you have and the test or attacker has put in the test bucket will now be loaded onto the application uh, itself. That could be like a malware or that could be some defacing the site or whatever, right? So now, of course, the application points to the attacker's created bucket, and that's the bucket snipping um, in the, uh, at a very high level. Now let's take a look at the example. So the first example is uh, uh, support.cybersecuritytv.mybucket.com. Now application owner deletes this S3, but not the DNS. 
right? So they delete the S3, and of course, uh, anyone tries to go to that bucket, they'll receive 404. And once I see this 404, I'll be like, oh, let me see if this domain is available for a grab. I'll grab it, and because the DNS records hasn't been cleaned up, so the main site will still be pointing to this support.cybersecuritymybucket.com. And because it's a valid DNS name, for example, what if I'm able to sign up for support.google.com? Can you imagine, like, all the requests... Uh, because you don't know as a user if you are on actual Google side or not. But if the Google would have cleaned up the DNS records, uh, that wouldn't be in case. Like you cannot go to the support.google.com if they do not they do not support the DNS. So that's a problem. Uh, the another one is so we talked about the S3 bucket snipping, but there is also a problem uh, with the GitHub. So for example, what is the application? Uh, download some dependencies or, or uh, refer to scripts which is on the GitHub page. And then GitHub page, uh, whoever was the owner, now deletes that GitHub page, but the reference is still there to the GitHub page, right? And as an attacker, what I'll do is I'll set up uh, the same page with, uh, by like, of course, I'll be owning that, and I'll have some malicious script running there. So now the application would be referring to my GitHub page instead of the actual where it was downloading dependency. Now it will be downloading the vulnerable dependency which intentionally I had put in to exploit the application. Right? So that's the issue here. Now, why why is it dangerous? So, uh, because anyone can sign up the domain and create the bucket, right? Uh, if, if I see 404 and support.google.com is available, I'll go ahead and sign up. I just have to pay, pay some nominal fees. And same way, like if I know, uh, oh, this bucket is deleted, it, I, I get 404, then I was like, oh, let me create the bucket. Like, And this might not be always intentional, right? Like if I'm the another customer and I sign up for that bucket, Maybe that bucket ra is being still referenced by another application, and then it's an unintentional bucket snipping vulnerability. Here, uh, the bigger problem is the application owner will not notice, like unless it's actually pulling the data from the bucket. But if it's something that the, just imagine if Gmail is pulling the data or, or pushing the data into the S3 bucket, then Gmail wouldn't notice that they are pushing data to the attacker's bucket, but the attacker will have all the information. And same goes for the domain name. Like if they do not like go and check out oh, who owns the support.google.com, they won't know uh, like who is the whether it's owned by them or by someone attacker. There was recent tax uh, like you know in Uber, Microsoft, Snapchat, USA.gov. There have been like you know many other uh, organization being exploited for, uh, due to this subdomain takeover vulnerability. Uh, the recommendation is, of course, you periodic audit of your DNS records. Just make sure you keep the one uh, uh, which is relevant and you don't have any dangling resources. And the second thing is you make sure you reconfigure the DNS settings. So uh, as soon as you have some resources which are no longer needed, you delete those and you reconfigure with the um, with a new, either new one or you delete the existing records. So uh, that, that's it. Uh, I want to talk about like quickly what these vulnerabilities are, uh, and and probably give you uh, because this is very common and you may come across to this vulnerabilities on your day-to-day -day browsing. So if you uh, like this video, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the Cybersecurity TV. I'll all see you next Monday. Until then, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment. Thanks. Bye.